Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick, and I'm going to be doing my initial bracket here. Um, it's literally like, and I, I did my initial little um, printout bracket, and then I kind of have my own little method on how I narrow it down. And so this is going to be my beginning, my beginning bracket. This won't be like my final one. I'm going to do probably one every day uh, leading up until Thursday. Uh, but this is my initial one. This is how I'm going to go about it. Um, you're going to hear me click because I don't have uh, my Astros here with me to be able to do it. So I'm just going to do my initial one here. Uh, so I'm going to start out uh, in the South Division, and I'm going to start out and I'm going to go with Florida to beat uh, Albany or Mount St. Mary. Next, I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. And the VCU Stephen F. Austin match, um, I was I, I still am not, I'm still a little torn on this, but I think I'm going to go in this little part right here. You saw it last year with Ole Miss and I forget who the other team was. A 12 and a 13 both did advance and this is where I'm going to have them do it. I'm going to have Stephen S. Austin and Tulsa both advance over UCLA and VCU. Uh, heading down to the bottom part of this bracket, I'm going to take Ohio State over Dayton and Syracuse over West Virginia, or the West, I can't even talk, Western Michigan, uh, New Mexico over Stanford, and Kansas over Eastern Kentucky. I'm going to stay in this bracket and finish it up till the Final Four, going with Florida over Pittsburgh, Tulsa over Stephen S. F. Austin. Uh, I really want to go with Ohio State over Syracuse just because of the poor play Syracuse has been playing, but... I think Ennis and C.J. Fair will get hot again, and I'm going to take them over Ohio State uh, because the but, 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 but. I think if they can take care of Western Michigan, they can immediately turn their attention to Ohio State. And really with Ohio State, all you have to do is be able to score enough points because Ohio State is a very poor scoring team. I'm gonna. I, I this is a hard one too. No, New Mexico's got some really big men. They just took uh, down San Diego State today, and. Kansas is without Joel Embiid, so I really wanted to take New Mexico, but I think Andrew Wiggins will uh, catch fire and he will lead Kansas until the uh, Sweet Sixteen or no, yeah, Sweet Sixteen. Uh, out of the Sweet Sixteen, obviously I'm taking Florida over Tulsa, and then with Joel Embiid, if Joel Embiid is back. I think it's an easy walk for Kansas through Syracuse. If not, I think it's a little bit tougher, but I'm going to take Kansas over Syracuse anyway. And sending the number one overall seed to the Final Four, I'm going to send Florida there. So Florida's my first team into the Final Four. Now I'm going to go down to the East Division where I'm going to take Virginia as the first team. Uh, Memphis over George Washington. I'm going to take Harvard and former Michigan coach Tommy Amaker over Cincinnati. Uh, I think Harvard's just one of those teams. They play not like they're in the Ivy League. They're they're a little bit different. Uh, they're a lot better than any team you'll find in the Ivy League. They lost a game in overtime, I believe, to uh, Yale in overtime. So that's their only loss in the Ivy League. Going to take Michigan State over Delaware, even though there is a player on Delaware that can give Michigan State fits. But I still think Michigan State's able to escape there. Providence and North Carolina, an interesting matchup. I think Providence can give North Carolina trouble, but I feel like Marcus Page uh, will leave North Carolina past Providence. Iowa State, uh, NC Central has another player who can give them fits, but I think DeAndre Kane, Melvin Edgem, and uh, Georges Niang make it through to uh, face North Carolina. In the bottom, uh, i got to take my boy Shabazz Napier in Connecticut over St. Joseph's, even though St. Joseph's just came off winning the A-10 over VCU. So they are hot, but I think uh, UConn bounces back from their loss to Louisville and takes the, lead, and takes the game. Uh, Villanova over Milwaukee. Each year there has been a 15 over a 2 for, I don't know, it was Missouri losing to Norfolk State, and then last year it was, there were two that year. I think Duke got beat by somebody, and then last year it was uh, Georgetown getting beat by Florida Gulf Coast. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to take Virginia over Memphis and obviously Michigan State over Harvard. Even though I think Harvard will give them a little bit of problems, the little time Tommy Amaker spent in the Big Ten, he did. He, I assume he learned some about Tom Izzo's coaching style and he will have a he will have uh, his team ready to play. But I just think Michigan State overpowers them and gets the win. Uh, in the bottom half, I'm going to take Iowa State over North Carolina and then Villanova over Connecticut in a close game. I think Shabazz Napier and Ryan Boatwright get hot in this game. They keep it close, but in the end, I think Villanova takes it in a late game, under a minute, uh, comes down to the wire game. 
Um, in the top of the bracket, I'm going to take Michigan State over Virginia. I think Michigan State's getting hot. I don't want to overreact to the fact that they they came out and showed uh, what, what they're capable of in the Big Ten. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm hoping they'll make it, but... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to go all in and on, on them like I am kind of right here. My final bracket may have them losing earlier, or it may have them going farther or just as far as I have them. I think Villanova is an underrated team. They haven't really played anybody. They got beat by Creighton both times they played them, lost to Syracuse, and also got beat by a bad Seton Hall team in the Big East tournament. But I think Villanova has the capability of beating Iowa State, and I think uh, James Bell... Um, has, once we get to the NCAA tournament, I think James Bell gets back to his uh, his shooting form, and I think Hilliard gets hot as well, and I think they're able to take down uh, Iowa State. Now, the Villanova-Michigan State is an interesting matchup. Villanova is more of a score-speed team. While Michigan State likes to get out and run, they do have a kind of a power-type uh, um, power offense and defense while Villanova is more finesse. I'm going to take Villanova as of right now. I just like Villanova. I've had them. I had them pegged as one of my teams. And when they lost to Seton Hall, they kind of fell a little bit for me. Uh, but I, I, I still, I'm still decently confident in them, but we'll see as I, uh, I narrow it down and maybe make a few changes. So coming up to the top, uh, Arizona over, uh, Weber State. And then Oklahoma State over Gonzaga. Marcus Smart, and he, he's got those guys playing amazing. Uh, they lost, they kind of blew the game against Iowa State by missing some free throws in the regular season, and then blew the game against Kansas, I think, by not being able, by not scoring enough in the second half. And uh, in the first half, uh, when Marcus Smart went off, Markel Brown, or when Marcus Smart went off, uh, Andrew Wiggins, and they put Markel Brown on him, I think that was the problem. And, uh, Andrew Wiggins, I think, knocked down back-to-back -back baskets once uh, Markel Brown was on him, and that kind of got Wiggins going. And I think they won't make that mistake again if they like they won't make that mistake again um, by taking Marcus Smart off the best uh, perimeter player for the opposing team. Oklahoma over Oklahoma State and San Diego State over New Mexico State. Both games where I could see an upset, but I'm not going to pick it. Uh, down in the uh, bottom half of the bracket, I wanted to take Nebraska. I think Taron Petaway is an amazing player, but I think Baylor is hot, and they're getting hot at the right time. Along with Creighton, Doug McDermott, definitely going to be the wooden player of the year. So I, I think they may struggle a little bit with Louisiana, but I think Creighton escapes uh, with a win. Oregon over BYU and Wisconsin over American. I'm gonna head back up to the top, and I'm gonna fake. I'm gonna take my first big upset with Oklahoma State over Arizona. I think Arizona without Brandon Ashley is gonna struggle against uh, Marlon Brown and LeBron Nash uh, with Aaron Gordon and Nick Johnson. I don't think they have the third scoring presence that Oklahoma State does, and I think Oklahoma State takes it. In the 4-5 matchup, I'm going to take Oklahoma. They were one of my sleeper teams. Um, I, I watched them a little bit. I've looked at their strength of schedule. It's very good, and I think they have the, I think they have what it takes to take down San Diego State. San Diego State is a little bit reeling here after losing to New, to, uh, New Mexico, and I think Oklahoma is able to take them out. I think New Mexico State even has a chance to beat San Diego State, but we will see. I'm going to take Baylor over Creighton, uh, just being that Baylor, Creighton, Creighton does have some shooters, and it does have rebounding. But Doug McDermott, if you can shut him down, hold him under 20 points, 15 points, you're going to be in a really good position to win. Baylor can score. Brady Heslip, you leave him open for threes, he's going to knock him down. I think he gets hot, lights out, and I think uh, Kenny Cherry helps him out, and they, they take out Creighton and move on to the Sweet 16. Uh, Wisconsin and Oregon, it's an interesting matchup. Oregon is old. If they get hot, I think they could easily take down Wisconsin. Um, if they get if they get super hot with uh, Lloyd, Jonathan Lloyd, um, if those guys can get hot, uh, I, I think they could easily take down Wisconsin. You saw it last year. They were the 12 seed, I think, and they pushed Louisville before Louisville eventually pulled away in the uh, Sweet 16. Uh, but I'm going to take Wisconsin. I'm going to take the safer pick, I guess, um, and go with Wisconsin over Oregon. Now, oh, i I got to finish this bracket. I was going to move it out already. Um, in the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State uh, match, I'm going to take Oklahoma State over Oklahoma. Uh, once again, I'm, I'm banking on Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart is amazing. I'm banking on him and uh, um, LeBron Nash and uh, Markel Brown helping him out a lot. I think they can, and I think uh, For Phil Forte, I think he's going to get some open looks from 
Uh, Marcus Smart driving. I think he's going to be an X factor with his three. I think he starts knocking them down, unlike he did against Kansas. I think he gets hot in the tournament, and I think he helps. I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to take Wisconsin over Baylor. This is a tough one for me. I feel like ba I feel like uh, there's going to be that one uh, divi not division um, part of the bracket, I guess, where a number one and two seed don't get there. They don't. They just don't make it to the elite eight. And I want to say it's this one. I want to say Baylor is going to take out Wisconsin, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. And I'm going to take Marcus Smart and the Oklahoma State Cowboys to the Final Four uh, to match up against the. Midwest division uh, winner. In the first one, Cal Poly uh, with a losing record. I feel like they're just a team that maybe could come out and shock everybody, but uh, they got to take care of Texas Southern and then maybe get their shot at Wichita State, but I'm going to take Wichita State. In this one, I want to take the talented freshman in Kentucky, but I'm going to go with the uh, solo freshman in Foster for Kansas State. I'm going to take them to beat Kentucky in a very, very close game. Kansas State played Iowa State very well. Iowa State was in conversation for maybe a one seed. Uh, they ended up with a Villanova and all those teams, Louisville as a number one option. In this game, um, I'm going to take NC State over Xavier and then NC State over St. Louis. Uh, TJ Warren, I watched him play um, in the ACC tournament and then a couple of times during the regular season. He is a pure monster and uh i think he takes care of xavier and st louis louisville arguably the hottest team in uh, uh the tournament right now i think they take care of manhattan manhattan may give them a little bit of a trouble but i think russ smith uh drops 25 at least 25 points and they they get past them in this game i'm going to take tennessee over iowa and then tennessee over umass uh putting another one of those teams that had to play on tuesday wednesday uh into this uh third round technically uh, Duke Mercer Mercer is a uh, Mercer is a team that I think could upset Duke. I'm not going to pick it. I'm going to take the Blue Devils, but I think Mercer that is a game to watch out for. Mercer Duke. Uh, I'm going to go down to Texas and take Texas over Arizona State and Michigan over Wofford. Um, I dip in, but uh, I don't know which one. And may maybe this will be one year that it doesn't. Uh, I'm going to take Wichita State over Kansas State. I think if Kentucky beats Kansas State, they present more of a problem to Wichita than Kansas State, but I think both of them uh, eventually fall to Wichita State. I'm going to take Louisville over NC State, uh, Duke over Tennessee, Michigan over Texas, kind of um, uh, following the 1, 2, 3, 4. I think it's, it happened... Uh, Last year, I forget which division it was that had one, two, three, four. I think it was the one that Michigan was in, the Kansas, Florida, Michigan, and I don't. I was it Wisconsin? I have no. I, the, Michigan was the four. Florida was the two. No, Wisconsin was. Two? I don't even know. I know there was one. I have two. I think like that. Yeah, because I have. Yeah, I'm gonna take Ohio State over Syracuse. You know what? I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that. Uh, I'm gonna take that upset. I think Ohio State escape out of there. I'm gonna take Louisville over Wichita State. I think Russ Smith and um, Montrez Harrell. I think they're just too much for Wichita State. I think uh, Louisville. Once I don't think Wichita State gets their revenge from last year. I think Louisville is as good, if not maybe better than last year. I know they lost Peyton Siva, but I think this team is. Uh, I think Russ Smith is more of a leader and more confident, and uh, I, I, I think the team has a shot to um, to, to make it uh, pretty far. If you haven't noticed, three of the four Final Four teams from last year are actually all in the Midwest Division, Louisville, Wichita State, and Michigan. And I think Michigan, um, rematch of the Big Ten ACC Challenge, Duke-Michigan, and I think Michigan gets revenge for their earlier loss to Duke. Uh, and then the rematch of the national championship happening in the Elite Eight, Louisville versus Michigan, and I think Louisville gets the best of Michigan again, even though Michigan is my favorite team in all of college basketball, advances to the Final Four. So my Final Four right now is Florida, Oklahoma State, and Villanova. Florida going up against Villanova, and I think Scotty Wilbekin uh, and company move on to the national championship. I think Florida is just too much. I don't. Th I think Florida's defense is just too much for Villanova. Villanova is more of an offensive-oriented team, and I think Florida. I think Florida holds them to under sixty points, but Florida only scores. I, I'm gonna. I think the score will be around sixty-five to fifty-nine. Florida. I think something around there. 
Um, I think I think uh, Villanova will have the lead going into half, but Florida will come back and take it. This is an intriguing matchup for me, Louisville versus Oklahoma State, but I'm going to take Louisville to go back to the national championship and defend it. And now here is the interesting game. Um, probably my favorite coach and Rick Pitino and uh, one of the one of the best coaches in college basketball, top five, top six uh, of the best coaches in college basketball. And I really, I, I'm ones I want to, which one I want to go with. For I, I feel like it's just too cliche to go with Florida. To, I, I never like to take the number one overall, number one. I know it's stupid because you, it happened last year with Louisville and it happened the year before with Kentucky. But I just, I don't know. I just do not like going with the number one overall seed. It's just what the, it's just like the cliche everybody pick. And I, I don't know. I just don't like doing that. It's not what I... Uh, I like to do with my brackets. So I'm going to take Louisville to repeat as national champions. I think um, Russ Smith, I think Russ Smith and Scotty Wilbekin have a shootout uh, in the national championship. I think Scotty Wilbekin puts up 27 points and Russ Smith puts up 30. And that's the difference in the score. I think Louisville wins 80 to 77. Uh, which is a high-scoring game for Florida, uh, not that high of a scoring game for Louisville. It is a high-scoring game, uh, but if you remember Michigan and Louisville last year was a high-scoring game. Well, while both teams were both high-octane offenses, um, I still think this one gets into the high. My bracket, uh, my initial one, this is just my beginning one. I'm going to have more coming out as we go. Uh, you guys can take a look. I'll scroll down here and talk. Uh, but I'm going to probably have one coming out each day. Maybe one day I'll have two, and then I'll probably do an update after every round, so Friday night, uh, Sunday night, uh, then the following Friday night and the Sunday night. So that's my bracket. Let me know what you guys think. I know I'm going to have – there's some controversial things on here. People gave me crap on last year's brackets, uh, but – just let me know. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I will catch you all later. Peace out, guys.